Life Unrehearsed, brought to you by Caregiver Crosswalk, Dementia Care Consulting, Never Roam Alone. And good afternoon. Welcome to Life Unrehearsed. My name is Matt Del Vecchio, specializing in life transitions, downsizing in the senior living industry. And I'm Corey Sirota, clinical social worker and psychotherapist, specializing in grief and loss. Coming right up on the first half of today's show, 99 year old Marvin Gord has set out to walk 1 million steps prior to his 100th birthday on New Year's Eve, all in the name of charity. We have Mr. Gord on the line and we're going to hear how he's making out. Now, Corey, just before that, um, we want to hear what's going on in the second half, but <laughs> you um, did a nice little family activity and survived it, didn't that, you? Well, that's the key to it. <laughs> I decided, what am I going to do during a family night? We're trying to figure out things, so I bit the bullet and I bought a puzzle. <laughs> And I, I literally went to the store and said, okay, what is, what's a normal number of pieces for a starter? So I went really easy at 300. All right. But, and, we, and we had a good time. But the most important thing is we didn't kill each other doing Amazing. it. Amazing. Yeah, that is uh, quite the feat. 300 yeah, I think you did, what, an hour and a half? And an hour everyone and a half survived. And everyone did, survived. Like, very good. Not a bad uh, COVID activity. And good on you for having the guts to do it. Uh, what do we have uh, coming up on the second half? Calling all snowbirds. What to do this winter, what to do this winter is going to be the question of the day. Well, thankfully, we're going to be providing you with some ideas about how to get through Montreal winters if you are, in fact, staying here. That's coming up after the 4.30 news. Oh, I do want to mention that on top of that, if somebody is gutsy enough to leave the province, we actually will also have a travel agent that's going to talk about safe travel. Yeah, that's uh, that's going to be very interesting. Uh, lots of things to consider. Many people mulling ideas as to what should we do this mm-hmm. winter. So yeah, that's going to be interesting coming up after the 4.30 news. All right. You know, uh, Corey, I read about Marvin Gordon in the National Post last month and I really couldn't believe what I was reading. This incredible and awe-inspiring 99-year-old from Toronto Toronto set a target of walking 1 million steps before his 100th birthday, which is actually this New Year's Eve. And we have Mr. Gord on the line, along with his daughter, Lisa Hemi, to tell us all about it. Welcome to Life Unrehearsed. Thank you. Hi. I have a comment to make. You were talking about Montreal. 96 years ago, I spent four winters there, between zero and four years old. Okay, so clearly you survived them. <laughs> Obviously survived them. The snow was just terrific there. Amazing. So we're talking 1924, 1925, 26. Not too many people, Corey, that we can be talking to on the air that was in Montreal at that time. Love it, Mr. Gord. You know, um, such an incredible initiative. One million steps before your 100th birthday, which is on New Year's Eve. Um, first of all, why are you doing this? To get, get as much support as I possibly can raise for Baycrest Baycrest uh, Health Sciences that saves, the, saves the seniors Oh, it's so amazing that you're doing this. I, I'm really in awe of it. I, I want to understand. So you set out this goal. What does a typical day look like? How do you know how many steps to do in each each, each day? I, I wear a pedometer. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> on, my, on my foot, and it measures every step. And at the end of my trip, it's usually about 10,000 steps a day, which equals about 20 miles a week, a little over that. I believe 10,000 steps a day. Corey, I... I I'm happy if I get five in a day and I'm wearing a Fitbit. (laughs) My goodness, you know, I I think there was a gentleman, uh, Mr. Gord, that was kind of the inspiration for you in England, wasn't he? Uh, Yes. Was he sort of uh, the idea behind uh, that to get you? uh, His name escapes me at the moment. Tom Moore, Moore, that's it. Okay. And he he had done, his, his garden was about 25 meters long. And I thought, geez, if that's what he does is 25 meters. <laughs> I do that just walking out of the out of the door. <laughs> and and, and uh, he had raised an incredible amount of money. And I thought, what the heck? <laughs> Let's give that a try and save some for a. Uh, Baycrest. Baycrest yeah. Hospital. Well, good for you. I mean, and and, and that gentleman raised over a million dollars, and, and uh, nice target for you for you to set out. And, and when you say walk out the door, Corey, uh, Mr. Gord lives at home on his own still. So when he walks out the door, he's walking out of the door of his of his own house. So um, when did you start this, Mr. Gord? And and how many steps have you done so far? 
How many steps have I done so far? He's done over 900,000 steps. Oh. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. Since July 1st. That's, uh, so I was going to ask, yeah, so you started July 1st. That's pretty impressive. 90%. Well, I've been walking since about 1980. <laughs> 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 I've done a little bit more than that. Uh, well, it's such a great sense of humor, too. And uh, obviously, um, you know, your attitude to get through this is, is, is incredible. So 90%, here we are, uh, mid-October, uh, so a couple mon- more months to go. You are right on track. So, uh, you know, congratulations on what you've done. And we really do wish you the best of luck. And um um you know this is all in in for uh, Baycrest for those of you that don't know Baycrest is an incredible organization in Toronto uh, health sciences research they do some wonderful work um and it's a world famous operation it absolutely is i think some of your family members uh, were also um uh, really yes benefit- my mother did uh, when she hit her 60s she was doing the volunteer work since that day every day of her life until she passed away at Baycrest but everyone at the hospital knew her because she worked in every volunteered in every department. Wow, that's terrific. So do you happen to know how much money you've raised to date? Uh, I don't know offhand, but just a minute. 78? Right. How much? How much did you raise? 77,000. About 77,000. All right. W- wonderful. So, you know, 77, probably, probably make about over 100 by the time the birthday we starts. Yeah. We hope. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what, and good for you. You're getting uh, more and more press uh, um, for this wonderful uh, initiative. And uh, um, Lisa, we're going to bring you. Uh, we're going to bring you in here uh, as well. Lisa, being the daughter of of Marvin Gord, um, you know, supporting Dad, and uh, you have a little crew over at the house today as well, uh, supporting. And and Lisa, from your perspective, here's your dad uh, sets this incredible goal, and and um, how is it from your perspective we are amazed we are so proud um, that he has decided to give back to the community that uh, and to help out with safeguarding our seniors the SOS campaign here we are in the second wave of the pandemic and uh, it's starting to hit the long-term care homes and uh, and the frontline workers and this money that we're he's trying to raise is going to be out there to help these people during this time when they're locked in and they can't go out and people can't come in, that uh, the seniors who need um, medical care, uh, they'll be able to do it through uh, telemedicine, um, that uh, their physio, they'll be able to do it through, uh, through technology for, um, you know, these poor people that are locked up that don't, aren't able to see family. Like, we're sitting here together. And, you know, my dad and me and Rafi Yablonski from Baycrest, we're all sitting here together. But, you know, these poor seniors that are locked up in these long-term care homes that can't be with family, it's a very sad situation. And we're hoping that this money will just help alleviate that sadness and, and make life a lot easier and a lot safer for a lot of them. Well, uh, this is incredible, so true. We're talking with Lisa and her dad, Marvin Gord, who is walking a, trying to walk a million steps by, uh, uh, by 2021, New Year's Eve, which I believe, I, if I understand, That's is your right. birthday. So cool. This is uh, really interesting. I want to know, this doesn't just, one doesn't just happen to do this. What kind of training does, do you need to do this? My dad has been walking Oh, for umpteen years, every day he's walked. Uh, he's a walker. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so when he heard of uh, Tom Moore over in England who walked, uh, he said, well, heck, I'm walking every day anyways. Let me make it count. And so he started the, uh, the chain of events to get us going for the... Uh, the million steps. It's amazing. And, and uh, you know, you, you are going on traditional walks, from what I understand, and sometimes there are outings, and you had a particular experience over at the Ripley's Aquarium in Toronto one day, and we're going to hear all about that interesting experience. Life Unrehearsed, brought to you by Leanna Senior Transition Support, specialists in downsizing and seniors' residences. Welcome back to Life Unrehearsed. I'm Corey Sirota, along with my co-host Matt Del Vecchio, and we are talking with Marvin Gord and his daughter Lisa Hemi. M- Mr. Gord is walking one million steps before his hundredth birthday on New Year's Eve, all in the name of charity. So this is all very exciting. I know that uh, you have been 
walking around your area, your vicinity of where you live, but you've also taken some sort of field trips ha- or what have you. So my understanding is there's a particular experience that recently happened at a walk at Ripley's Aquarium in Toronto. Can you share that story with our listeners? Sure. We were, <clears throat> we were doing a walk. We've, we've decided to walk around certain uh, landmarks and, um, and places of interest in Toronto. And one of the places that we went to was the Ripley's Aquarium. And near the end, my dad was walking um, off by himself, he was continuing to walk, and the rest of us were sitting there having a cold drink of water, etc. And these, they had just opened the doors to the general public. And these two young girls had come up to me and said, uh, who is that man? And so I said, that's my father, Marvin. And they said, well, he seems you were all wearing sweatshirts. We were wearing sweatshirts that said Marvin's million steps on them. And so one of the girls said, what's he doing? I said, He's trying to walk a million steps before his 100th birthday in order to raise money for the Baycrest Health Sciences to help safeguard the seniors. And so they said, he's amazing. How old is he? I said, he's 99. He'll be 100 in a couple of months. And they said, oh, they were just so totally taken with it that one of the girls said to me, can you turn around? And I know it's going to sound kind of crude, but can I take a picture because on the bottom of my sweatshirt was the website for where people could donate. And she wanted to take a picture of the bottom of my sweatshirt, which was in that wonderful place, (laughs) (laughs) in order to take uh, a picture of the website, because she said that as soon as she got home, she wanted to donate. Now, these girls were just young girls in their 20s, early 20s, and just so showed such great interest. Mm-hmm. And she said, and I am spreading this word. Amazing. And you know, Lisa, we're going to get that website out there at the end of uh, this interview. Um, uh, great story. Just love it. Mr. Gord, you have had indeed a fascinating life, uh, starting from your zero to four years old here in Montreal, as we've just come to find out. Um, can you share, I know you're a vet in the in the Second World War, but so much more. Can you in a nutshell, what are some of the highlights of your 99 years? Well, the war, of course, was one of the big ones. And that was four years in uh, Canada, England, Africa, Italy, and someplace else which is crazy <laughs> at the moment. Right. And when I, got, when, I, when I got back, we were the first ship to land after the war because we were heading towards Canada and then over to Japan, and the war ended when we were two days from, from, from uh, Canada, so we were the first ship to land. Hmm. And then I registered at U of T to get my ph- degree in pharmacy when I was about 48, I guess. Really? Uh, no, about 28, I'm sorry. Oh, 20, okay. <laughs> Pardon me. <laughs> and then about 12 years later, at 39, I picked up a degree in psychology, and I was always walking during, what, because the studies kept me at home mostly. And then after that, I, when I was in my close to 60, I got a degree in law. And when I was 83, I got a qualification in finance. For, as, and all and that kept me off. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. You took your Canadian securities course. And, well, you're being humble. What, what was your mark in that Canadian securities course at 83 years old, Mr. Gord? I'm ashamed to say I was the only one got honors in it. <laughs> Can you imagine uh, 83 years old, Curry? Wow. <laughs> of, of all the professions that you've had, I know one that is dear to your heart. One that's dear to my heart? <laughs> Teaching. I was a professor at, uh, at Centennial College, one of the first community colleges in Ontario, and I was the only one there who could teach in four different departments. Which they were quite happy about. Well, so of course, I. listen to your uh, your CV is quite impressive. Um, let me ask you something. You're, you're you're full of pep. Obviously, it's fantastic. What's the secret to uh, such a long, productive life? Oh, that's very very simple. As much of a Johnny Walker Black as I could handle. <laughs> I love it. There you go. <laughs> 
obviously, and Lisa, you see your dad all the time, um, and I had the fortune uh, of talking to him prior to this interview. And uh, Mr. Right. Gord, your your attitude is just wonderful. Uh, talking with Mr. Marvin Gord, ninety nine years old, he has a target of one million steps. He's done nine hundred thousand, incredible, and uh, the goal is before his hundredth birthday on New Year's Eve. All this for uh, Baycrest Health Sciences. So we'd be remiss if we, uh, um, if people want to donate to this wonderful cause, where do they have to go? They would go online to the website of marvinsmillion.com. All right, marvinmillions.com. If you're not sure, you could also go on our Life Unrehearsed Facebook page. We posted that today as well. Lisa, thank you for coming on the air. And of course, uh, Mr. Gord, thank you uh, for sharing a little time here on your Sunday. We wish you, on behalf of Corey and I, the best of luck in the next couple of months. And uh, we know you're going to surpass that uh, that million steps. Uh, so uh, thank you so much for coming on. on thank here. you both so very much. I, thank I, you for supporting us. I can't wait to hear how this ends. Oh, I'm just so, so excited for you. Good luck. Good <laughs> Good luck, good luck. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Corey, what do we have coming up uh, on the uh, second half? Coming up on Life Unrehearsed, what can snowbirds do for this this winter if they if they're cooped up into their homes this year because they're not traveling because of the pandemic there's lots of suggestions you do not want to miss them because they're coming from our very own i'm going to say my very own our <laughs> very own matt del vecchio is going to share his pearls of wisdom with us also you're going to hear from a travel agent for those of you who are a little bit more adventurous and will want to try something they're going to he's going to give you some tips about traveling during a pandemic so that's all coming up right after the 4:30 news